Welcome to another episode of Stories of Awakening podcast. Today is going to be a bit different because I have a friend with me, Daphne, and she's going to interview me about a subject that I really care about and has been always important in my life, but especially in the last uh, few months as I got engaged. And so, yeah, welcome, Daphne. First of all, thank you for helping me with this. (laughs) hi yeah it's very nice to be here yeah so thank you and uh, Daphne have been helping me in the last couple of months um yeah just thinking about this subject uh that is basically relationships conscious relationships and much more also and yeah and build a world around it and it's definitely something that I will work on in the future and uh, it will develop with time, but Daphne will. Yeah. Very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So today I'm going to interview you. So I'm going to take the mic right now, like the metaphorical mic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I thought maybe, maybe for, for a split second, let's take people back, right? Because they have been used to you talking about healing, right? Talking about spiritual subjects, um, talking about, uh, Reiki. But this topic, right, relationships, I, I think you've talked about it before, but like this kind of maybe kind of new direction that you're also taking a little bit with your business um, is new for these people. And I just wanted to tell them a little bit about, uh, let's tell them a little bit about how this has come about and how you have been guided to the subject. Yeah. Um, as in, we were doing a meditation, right? And you were meeting with your inner wisest part. And I asked you, what um what are you here to bring can you ask your inner wise sparse what you're here to bring and what did your inner wise spark say so i don't remember exactly but i remember it was it was to create a new new idea of family and yes. it's developing still now so i arrive at this concept called holy family and so yeah, I I really realized that part of a list what I'm here to do is really have a focus on creating a different ideas of what family is and yeah, how it can improve the world and the life for future generations. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. So it's so it was so cool to see this coming through and to see you realize like Oh my God. This is actually something I've been loving and interested in all this time. And I, I didn't really like notice it as the thing that I could go into. But now that I have this wisdom, it feels Mm -hmm. really exciting to me. And so there was one beautiful thing. And I think it would be nice to start this interview with that statement of yours of what do you believe a new idea of family or relationships are? Like if you would give it like a statement, like. Yeah, so after all these years, I realized that to me, relationships are really the ultimate tool for evolution. And this Mm -hmm. is my experience and what I can talk about. Um, Everything that I've done in my life in terms of self-development and spiritual growth or anything like that was because relationships didn't work or something happened in my, especially romantic relationships. Those are the most intimate and the most powerful, at least for me, Mm -hmm. uh, to learn more about myself. And yeah, it's something that I always cared about. And, but I had a completely different uh, idea in the past. You know, I grew up in a home where uh, the relationship wasn't very healthy. So I didn't have a good example of romantic relationship growing up. So I had to learn everything myself, making my own mistakes. And usually, as happens for everyone, you know, we whatever we see in childhood is what we repeat uh, in adulthood unless we do something to change it, consciously change it. And so this is what's happening to me. Um, mm-hmm. I was, you know, codependent 
meaning that I was really just thinking about my partner needs, never thinking about myself. I was fe- I was having so much fear of being alone. So I was staying in this relationship for ages, even if I would have, I should have left much earlier. And, you know, I was terrified not to find someone to spend my life with. And of course, when you are so, we, we, you make the choices for fear, like I was doing it. What happened was that they weren't working. And so I was finding myself single. Uh, and I had also any kind of relationship in, so it's something that I, I really experienced long term relationship. I had 10 years relationship. I had three years relationship. I had two weeks relationship. So really many relationships in my life. So I have experience of different types of relationship also. Mm -hmm. They really taught me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's take it back for a moment because you said something very crucial, I think, in the beginning of your perspective of relationships being the ultimate tool of evolution, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, that's big. That's like a big and different way of looking at it. Because if I look at myself, for example, I can dive so deep into work, right? And I think work is like the ultimate tool of evolution or, but actually it is the relationships. If I think back at it now and look at, yeah, what is the thing that is teaching me something, right? Mm -hmm. What is the things um, that is kind of mirroring things back to me? And you kind of touched upon, um, how this was for you at your home in your past. And you talked about some fear and like codependency. So if on the one hand we have this relationships as a tool of evolution, then what did you grow up in? Like, what would that be like relationship as? Yeah. Well, still I would call them for evolution because the reason why I'm Mm. so passionate about what I do is because I saw how they can be painful and they might not work. So without realizing it all my life, I was trying to find a way to make them work in a mm. harmonious way. And mm. and then I almost lost hope because for a very long time, I I just thought that, well, I was either thinking like Disney movies where, you know, it's just all, all easy and no problems at all. So I was searching for this mm-hmm. then I was never finding them because a perfect relationship, I realized, doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I was repeating these patterns there um, that I saw growing up in childhood and uh you know, I was uh, attracting emotionally unavailable partners. Um, uh, I was, um, you know, um, always giving more than what I was receiving. So I was deeply unfulfilled. And I, I'm not giving the fault to my partner because it was also my responsibility to actually take care of myself and listen to my intuition and, you know, uh, also speak up for myself. But I wasn't because I was so afraid of uh, losing these partners mm-hmm. and and so being alone i think the the main problem and i can see it in my lineage too throughout different generation is just this fear of being alone mm. of not having support not having a family so staying in relationships they are not healthy so at least i wasn't alone but that's uh i realized is really the worst thing you can do for yourself and also for your partner, because if he's not behaving in the, in the best way possible, the only way for him to change is not you forcing him, but it's just, you know, you take care of yourself. And if that means leaving the relationship, you should do that. And that gives the other person the opportunity to look within to see if something he could have done something different or to work on himself, you know? So, yeah, I, I think, um, the relationship that I saw growing up made me very passionate about finding a way to find a harmonious way to be in partnership. Uh, but, um, until I went to into psychology, meditation, self-development, 
um, programs and spirituality, I wasn't understanding that actually everything that is outside myself is actually a mirror of what I have within. So I had to work on myself Mm -hmm. to become the partner that I wanted to attract, basically. And, Mm -hmm. And really realize that, yeah, I... Yeah, relationships are really mirrors, mirrors, and not just romantic relationship. We are talking here mainly about that, but in general, I think friendship also with mentors or teachers or with family, those are really mirrors that value, for example, your level of self-love. Because if you accept behaviors that don't make you happy, it means that your self-love is not that strong so you can work on that and you know reject certain behaviors and with the risk of losing the partner but at least mm. stay true to yourself you know so yeah. all things that in the process i uh, i realized um you know what what relationships are for and mm. you know also seeing the end of a relationship i think society really um also i i like to say program us in a way that we sh- we believe that if our relationship end, ends is a is a failure but sometimes if it's unhealthy as i was saying it's the best thing that you can do for for everyone mm. Mm. and uh, also i know there is a kind of challenge in uh, you know everyone is competing to who has the longest relationship but also i realize that the length of the relationship really doesn't mean anything about the quality of the relationship. In fact, this is also with friendships. You know, I, I meet free friends that in two weeks, I have such a deep and profound friendship. And there are people that have been knowing for 20 years, they're actually becoming more and more distant, you know? So, mm. um, also this is another thing that I needed to let go. It doesn't matter the length. It doesn't matter they hand you know and are all things that they they didn't people didn't teach me directly these things but you pick it up indirectly from yeah they're saying right yeah can you tell me a little bit more that, about that like can you take me back a little bit to when you were young and maybe some relational things that you saw around you or that happens and how you see that that was influencing your relationships yeah so let's see if i have an example in mind um well there were words words that were said uh you know family is everything uh you need to stick together regardless you know like the important thing is to stay together regardless what happens, which is absolutely true. But if there is abuse, mental, physical, um, psychological, you don't have to stay just because you are a family. The best thing you can do is actually leave. But I was, I was seeing that, you know, there was abuse in my family, emotional and psychological. And I could see that my part my my parents were staying together and so this is what i did you know yeah so this is i'm sure so many people do and i think one of the main thing that that happens in uh, in people uh brains is you know well you see this growing up okay you have to stick together regardless what happens and there is maybe there is this idea of I should, I deserve better, but there is Mm. a lack of trust and lack of faith that Mm. actually you can find better for yourself. Um, People are afraid of the unknown, you know, they know what they're losing, but they don't know what they're getting into. Yeah. If I think back to myself to, to reflect also is that, um, Outside of maybe like the, the trust for me, for example, was also the not knowing any better, almost mm-hmm. like not having seen something different. And so not even knowing that that is a possibility. So maybe we can, 
I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this um, resonate with that, right? Resonate with, first of all, like this whole saying of if you're family, you need to stick together, right? And how that can sometimes also be toxic when there isn't actually like a very healthy relationship. So before we get into like this new idea of relating and new idea of family, what do you believe before we're going to look more into the future or more into what, what we do want to see, right? What we do want to be created. What are some old ideas of family? Mm -hmm. What are some ideas that might be limiting us so that the person listening to this maybe can recognize that in their own life and be like, Oh, so there's also something else possible, right? Or maybe, oh, I recognize this. This is me. Yeah. So there are many things. And I am from Italy. Um, mm-hmm. and the church, the Pope is here. And even if I don't know many people that go to church my age, for example, I know culturally we are being very influenced by the ideas of religion and so there there is and i felt it i felt it when i broke up with in my 10 years relationship uh and i was 27 28 and is what was when everyone was getting engaged or living together or getting married you feel the pressure that mm. you know you're going in the opposite direction and even if it's much better i'm sure than 10 20 30 years ago like from society like you feel the pressure for women especially to to settle at a certain age Mm. and if you don't meet those standards you really feel a how do you say outcast you know you feel Mm. different and they everyone is starting to ask you these questions and i know they do it out of love and maybe they project the, their own fears onto you, um, but is really not healthy for people that are trying to discover themselves, uh, settle just when they feel, you know, is the right person for them, or maybe never settle because also this is not for everyone. Marriage is not for everyone, um, you know. Mm. Monogamous relationships are not for everyone, so. Even indirectly, I was listening to so many of these questions. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, when are you going to find a boyfriend? Or oh, next year you're going to get married, I feel it. Or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. when you find someone, oh, when you're going to get a baby, something like that. And there is a lot of pressure that even if you are consciously aware that is not what you want or not you, they're mm-hmm. still playing a part in, um, yeah in your belief system and of course everyone is different i also have friends that never cared about these things but i would say it's not the majority around me uh in my generation everyone yeah yeah was trying to find this thing so definitely pressure for women especially i think after third to find someone and so i'm not surprised that people settle for what they have you know Mm -hmm. what i was hearing is also nobody will ever be perfect so everyone will have Mm -hmm. issues which is mm. true, is true. There is a difference between you not know, being perfect and accepting whatever you have for fear of being alone or not finding anyone else and yeah. be unhappy for the rest of your yeah. life. Yeah, so what I'm really hearing you kind of also say is that this perspective of seeing relationship as the ultimate tool of evolution and kind of the opposite of like this old idea of family and this new idea of family it's also really a shift around w- living according to external ideas of what family is yeah. and starting to live more from like the internal idea of what do I want my relationships to look like, even though maybe the system tells me it has to look a certain way and like all the benefits that can come from that. Um, is that, yeah? Okay. Yeah, my, and my so- life, sorry. yeah. no, my life is about... And I realized this not long ago, but mm-hmm. it's really about breaking the rules. <laughs> I love do, it. I love it. <laughs> do things in a different way. And I think my specific area, because I think you are doing the same and many other of our friends are doing similar things, not that they are in on this path. But mm. I think one of my area will definitely be family mm. and relationships. 
and beautiful. Yeah. And I love it. And I love that you say uh, it, that this kind of rebel side, this yeah. because you have this. I like in the works in the weeks working with you. I've seen also this really beautiful like kind of rebel side or like the the goofy side like the laughing side uh, and I found that very beautiful seeing that and uh yeah and so in astrology is I would say Aquarius energy so I'm Aquarius rising yeah <laughs> yeah okay so this is the Aquarius energy good to know good yeah to know. and I want to okay. add just one thing about what you were saying, maybe I can expand later, but you know, that I usually speak about spirituality and energy work and all these kind of mm -hmm. things. But I, I feel that in this new idea of family, we can talk about it later, but, mm -hmm. um, there is this dimension as well. There is. Yeah, the, for sure. The, the yes. spirituality, uh, part of the relationship. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into that later. But before we get into that, I'm super curious towards like the, because we just talked about, right, this, this kind of shift of making from li living your relationship for the external world or creating your idea of family from the external world to more of your internal world. And I'm just really wondering, like, what was a moment for you or an experience for you that made you make that shift, right? Mm -hmm. So this story can really maybe speak about trusting the universe and the process. So there is still spirituality here too. And I wasn't into these things when I made that decision. But <laughs> my life, I think I started to believe when I uh, came across these books and coaches and everything, I started to believe straight away to the things that I was reading because were things that I lived in my own life and I didn't have an explanation for. So I decided to leave a 10 years relationship and I moved to London for this person. We bought a house together, but really slightly after that, we, I realized that it wasn't the right person for me anymore. We, we grew up in very different directions and, our values weren't aligned anymore. And uh, there was a particular conversation that my boyfriend at the time had with a friend that was talking about, you know, his own values. And I really, really realized that they weren't mine at all. So I made that decision that day to end the relationship I didn't do it the same day, but we started to talk about it. And after a couple of months, I think we took the decision to, to break up. Um, it was more my decision, but it was a very peaceful way to do it. So, um, I think we, we dealt with that very well. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I jumped into the unknown completely. And mm -hmm. was so unhappy in that relationship that I remember saying to myself, I would rather, you know, sleep under a bridge than um, living with this person. This is how unhappy I was. And I, you don't have to arrive at that point. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes people have to, uh, to get to the extreme. I was even having, uh, you know, the I think it's called rash in English, where I was my my skin was itching because I was so mm. it was such a big sign that I needed to leave, and so my body started to get sick as well. And uh, so I took that decision, and I didn't believe in the universe or anything like that. But I said, okay, I'm gonna risk it. I'd rather really uh, be homeless than living with this person. So let's see what happens. So I took the the decision to leave and you know i was abroad my family wasn't there um uh, i had friends but i moved uh, just a year and a half before so it wasn't long that i was there so i didn't know many people and the salary that i had at the time uh wasn't allowing me to pay both the mortgage and uh, an extra rent to live by myself. So I took the decision and miracles started to, to happen. So my ex, uh, decided to pay the mortgage by himself so he could keep the house. And that was a big relief for me. So, 
At the same time, uh, friends that were uh, a couple um, that we knew were actually more his friends than my friends. But anyway, they moved in the same area in London and people that lived in London know how big it can be and how rare <laughs> that is to find friends that are in the same area, walking distance from where you are. So mm. and also they rented out a, a flat, um, an apartment with an extra room, which is also very ra- rare in London because everything is so expensive. So you just rent what you can, not something extra. So I think a, a couple of weeks, two or three weeks after I took this decision, uh, those friends also moved in the same area with an extra bed. And I really saw that as a miracle. I could move in with them. Um, it was also good for them because I could, you know, help with some expenses, you know, help them with paying the bills and stuff like that. So that was the first miracle that I realized and I didn't expect. And uh, it was very cheap also what I was paying compared to the prices of London. So it was it was really a miracle for me. And I think a month after I broke up or something like that, I also got a promotion at work completely unexpected I wasn't working more or better than what I was working before so I think um, it was another sign that I was going in the right direction and shortly after I started to find new friends and uh, starting really to to discover who I was because after 10 years relationship of course you need to rediscover yourself uh, especially if it was an uh, unhealthy one and mm-hmm. and yeah, everything started to work out. And I remember that time of my life as the best time of my life still until now. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. that was a proof that really sometimes when you feel it's the right thing to do, even if it's super risky doing this thing, sometimes it's worth like jumping in the unknown, um, have a, have a leap of faith and do what mm-hmm. you feel is right for you. And things yeah. are aligned. Beautiful. So it was really in this moment that you started to decide, I'm going to choose my internal way of how I want to relate and with who I want to relate and what that gets to look like. And even though I might feel like I should be in a relationship or be in this relationship or whatever, I'm going to dare to make the jump. And I think you said something really interesting about having to rediscover yourself. And maybe also because in that time, like in the way we talked about it before, also, you started to see some different parts of yourself, right, that weren't aligned with this relationship. And so can you tell us a little bit more, like give us a little bit of an insight into how that felt and how that rediscovering of yourself, um, what does that look like? What does that look like? Sure. I started to give priority to my pleasure in a sense that I just did what I wanted to do because there was no one else next to me that I had to tell, you know, I'm going this place or I'm going on holiday in this place. Do you want to come? I was just doing whatever I wanted. I felt completely free. And so I tried different things that I never tried before. And you know, even even starting to travel alone uh, was mm-hmm. such a big thing for me. And this is, of course, is different for everyone. For someone is uh, starting a new hobby, for some others is traveling. But I remember starting to travel alone and it was something that I was always afraid of. And mm. until these days, it's one of the best things that I like to do because mm-hmm. you meet so many people and you really are free to choose your schedule. I don't know. You really realize what you like and what you don't like, and you don't have to compromise. Mm. Uh, then, of course, if you get in a, into another relationship again, you you can learn how to compromise again. But at least you know what you prefer, and it's not because there is an influence of someone else telling you to do certain things. Um, and that was I was experiencing for sure. So it was the mm. first time in my life that I really was constantly choosing every day what I wanted to do, not to please anyone, um, but just because I felt it was the right thing to do. Mm. Yeah, it really sounds like 
this relationship that you had with him was kind of this catalyst for mirroring to you what you did not want. Exactly. And so in that way, it kind of pushed you into this evolution of exactly. But what do I want that now that I now that I suddenly see that this what I th- all this time thought I wanted isn't what I want, then what is? Yes. Right? And exactly. what is? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't have said it better. Exactly. And um, <laughs> that relationship specifically, and again, this is not to blame or criticize anyone. It was really a mirror or of what I didn't want or what mm-hmm. I, it was everything I didn't want in a, in a relationship. And of course, it changed throughout the years, but it changed in, in a way that, um, you know, it was the opposite of where I was going. So it couldn't last anymore. But I learned so much. And as you said, I think one of the main things that I learn is what I don't want. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And I can also imagine that going out of that relationship, you know, you're making this brave choice and you're starting to rediscover yourself, right? You're traveling, you're doing all these things, you're following your pleasure. I can also imagine that in that same time, there might have been some things that you walked into on that path that were maybe a, maybe less easy or like a struggle, but still very much worth it. Like, can you maybe give an example of something that was maybe less easier in that time? Because I, can, I think sometimes that when we hear these stories of, oh, and then I found my pleasure and everything, and then maybe someone listening, right, having taken that big step, mm-hmm. and they do experience pleasure, or maybe they're not seeing in this moment, oh, I'm actually experiencing pleasure, but they're also experiencing Maybe mm-hmm. less good moments because life will always be lifing, right? And always yeah. exist in opposites. So yeah. what were some other things that were happening in that, in that season of rediscovering who you wanted to be in relationships that were maybe a bit harder, right? That maybe something that someone is in right now and that you can tell them like, It's okay. This is normal. This is also part of like the rediscovering of who you want to be in relating. Yeah. Something that I was struggling with at the time was realizing how easier was even simple things like do food shopping or asking if you were super busy at work, asking someone else to do something for you. They're Mm -hmm. busy and I had to do everything myself. And I was in a foreign country where at that point I knew the language, but still, you know, I needed to sign contracts to, to move in a new house, for example, or, you know, um, create my own bank account without having a joint bank account. So all these kind of things that I never done before, mm-hmm. I had to do it by myself also in a language that wasn't my mother tongue so it was just a a very difficult situation and also of course it can be um you can miss some parts of the relationship you know falling asleep next to someone knowing that you're not alone before for uh, going to bed that's definitely something that you you need a bit of adjustment and some time to to get used to again yeah Uh, um, but you know, it's really about getting used to things because now I'm so happy that I'm able to do things by myself without asking someone else to do it or relying on someone else to do these things. And mm. I, you know, throughout my life, as I said, I had many relationships and my, I had also many times where I was single and I realized that the best thing you can do is really enjoying fully the stage of your life you're in so it's true that maybe you you really your biggest desires is sharing dinner with someone that's was another thing like eating by myself I, that was new um or going to bed by myself but then you you get used to it and everything is about you know like being present with the experience that you have right now and then you know change it later because now i know that i can manifest let's say the life that i want but now the fact that i you know 
I can sleep alone in a bed without anyone snoring next to me or, you know, moving during the night and waking me up. Or, mm. you know, if I want to eat just a, a quick salad or a sandwich without worrying about cooking anything for anyone else, like enjoying also learning to enjoy these things that maybe you thought that they were sad somehow and mm. you would have judged as mm. sad and, you know, mm. you feel lonely. Um, yeah. 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 And then, so, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. The, sometimes the truth is you are lonely also in relationships if they're not the right ones, you know? So it's really try to see uh, what every stage of your life is teaching you. And in that time, the first time that I broke up a list was really learning to be independent. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Because yeah. I was codependent and, you, you know, I was relying, relying on other people for to mm. for my on my partner especially mm. yeah. yeah and i i always find that such a fine line right between like codependence but also our innate biology that actually needs other people right that yeah. needs connection and it's like this this balancing act between the two and it sounds like in that period where you started to uncover who do i want to be how do i want to relate right you started to maybe learn more how to be interdependent where, you know, you could hold yourself, but you knew also that if you needed it, you could ask for the help maybe mm -hmm. that you needed. Yeah. I think that came with time. Uh, mm. Initially it was really going to the opposite. So to mm. rely from relying totally uh, on someone to become completely independent. Maybe I went too far in that direction. <laughs> and then uh, in the last few years, I'm coming in the middle. Now, mm -hmm. a partner that is on a similar journey and he knows what interdependence means, I think I, we can create that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was not easy until a couple of years ago. Uh, I was... Mm -hmm. Uh, the polar opposite, you know, but mm -hmm. the, the journey that I needed to take. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so tell me a little bit more because you're already seeing like I have a partner now, and congratulations on your beautiful engagement, Thank right? You. That I've seen uh, on Instagram. Okay, so you're in this moment. You're you're enjoying more pleasure. You're learning how to be with yourself, but then at some point, right? You're like, okay. Now it's time for me to to start relating again, right? Maybe you went a little bit too much to that independent side and now you're like, mm, mm -hmm. I kind of need relationships in my life. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so how yeah. did you go from that? And I think this story can be exemplary for anyone listening, being at that stage to you know, reconnecting with people again in healthy ways. Yeah. So I'll tell you how it happened, actually. It's not maybe what you can expect, but so two years ago, I broke up with another partner and I was living with this partner too. And I was so done with relationships. I was really, I was okay. As not, it's simply not for me. It's just not happening, mm. not working. And for the first time in my life, I was really okay by myself. And what happened in the past when I broke up with other partners, I enjoyed it in the moment, but there was always the thought, okay. I will find someone else. I will go back into the, in the market and, you know, try to find someone. <laughs> <laughs> there was all that thought. But two years ago, when I broke up with the latest ex, I really was done. I said, I have a purpose now, now in life. I am a coach. I love what I do. I like studying these things. This is what I'm going to do. And I will focus on this because I am done with, with relationship. So 
for me specifically is such a big deal from where I was coming from, arrive there. And I wasn't faking it. I was really done. I was so, I said, I also, one of my biggest dreams when I was younger was, you know, to be a mother and to be a wife. It was really a dream. And I, I arrive at the point where I will be perfectly okay if this doesn't happen for the rest of my life. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So was this to get into that feeling of done, right? Because was this like, um, I'm done. Like, was it like a, I'm done. I'm surrendering to the universe. Whatever is meant for me, give it to me. Or is it, was it like, I'm done and like, oh, fuck relationships, you know? Which I one think, of the two was it? Yeah. I was, I was at peace, a, a peace with that decision, but there was also a bit of energy fucked relationships and I just <laughs> I'm really fed up with them. Uh, there was a bit of both, but I, I really wasn't faking the peace that I was feeling with the thought of maybe never getting married, never having a family. Um, and of course, <laughs> when you are in those states is when things happen because there is not the attachment that, you know, mm -hmm. repelled them. And there was no attachment at all. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I said, okay, I'm single again. What do I usually do when I'm single? I just do what I want. So what do I want to do now? It was after years of pandemic and lockdown. I said, I want to find, and I also awaken at the time spiritually awakened let's say um so i was into all the spiritual stuff so i want to find people in person that are interested in the same things that i am right now because all the courses that i've done all the coaches that i had were all online and it was perfect for the time but i wanted to meet someone in person and i also didn't want to go on a retreat where i needed to meditate for a week without talking to anyone because I felt I'd done that during the pandemic. So I really wanted to have fun. And so I started to think, oh, maybe I should go to a festival. And of course, as always, when you decide something, you know, the universe will bring you the opportunity that you are looking for. And I remember listening to a podcast and listening about this uh, festival that was in America. Uh, called Arcadia, uh, and it seems like the perfect thing for me it was a conscious festival. It was all about spirituality. There were spiritual leaders that were giving speeches over there that I really wanted to see live. We could dance the rest of the time where they were in these conferences. So I decided to, to, to go. It didn't make any logical sense. Um, it was very last minute decision. I, paid a lot of money for the flight uh <laughs> <laughs> really totally mm, yeah uh, unlogical i would say mm -hmm. and there is where i found my now future husband <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah totally unexpected and even when he arrived and he was interested in me i was look i'm really not not interested in anything right now but then you know little by little mm -hmm. open i didn't give up so little by little i open up and this is what i was looking for some time someone that wanted me and chose me and not that i had to chase you know so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i love it beautiful and and there are a few things that um you said like for example you said so what do I do when I'm single? And you said, I just do whatever the fuck I want. And I feel that like, because you chose to go and do something that you just wanted, you found someone where you can probably also just be that in the relationship, right? Because eventually, if you kind of only can be yourself outside of the relationship, then exactly, that's also in the end, not really going to work out, right? Exactly. And so I also, this really also ties in with what you said about I found my purpose. I thought, fuck, fuck. I, I don't know. Did you say it like that? Fuck relationships. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm okay with my work. And um, it sounds like 
this next evolution of relationships that you went in with this partner is really being in a partnership where you can also be do do whatever you want like of course with with um with taking the other in consideration but like still you know communicate about what you want and do what you want and right yeah now this whole idea of um maybe purpose that comes together and that also is found in relationship comes kind of into your journey can you tell us a little bit about that yeah so exactly as you said and correct me if i didn't understand your question but exactly as you said because i was following again my passion and what i wanted Mm -hmm. i found people that were aligned with me and Mm -hmm. things were working out easily you know without games without you know with total honesty total transparency and i think that was the key for us you know he's also was going through his own evolution and uh, challenges and so we were totally honest and transparent about who we were and where we were at Mm -hmm. And, and what we wanted in a relationship too and as you said is you know after all this time and also all this relationship what i realized was is really freedom is the best thing you can give to someone you know let them free to choose you and feel free to choose them every day you know um and uh free also to pursue your hobbies and your passions without being judged and without judging others you know um mm-hmm. so that's that's definitely the main difference in the relationship that, that I have now compared to what I had before and not because my partners were like that some maybe were more controlling than others but uh I had also many partners that were supporting or what I was doing, even if I didn't understand it. But I realized I was more, mm-hmm. like, okay, we are together, so we need to do everything together. I was more mm. that because, again, it's something that I saw in my family. And mm. I thought that, that meant being in a couple. I thought mm. that, that was being in a couple, do everything yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that really also shows again how we imprison ourselves so often in a relationship, right? Where we think we have to show up a certain way. We cannot show or can only show this side of ourselves. Or this is what that looks should look like. If this is what you should do if you're in a relationship, this is something you shouldn't do, right? It's so uh so interesting and I find it very beautiful with you to see that awareness of yeah, there were things my partner did, but here was I with my my own preconceived ideas of what I have to be in a relationship, right? And um, in previous conversations where I talked to you, we talked about this idea of conscious relating and conscious relationships. And I feel like we're kind of going into that right now. Yes. Where, so, okay, I can, I can talk about that, but let's, let's, um, Let's get into it. If we have uh, unconscious relating or maybe relating on one side and then conscious relating on the other. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about that? So, you know, I think when you start to look within um, and start to become aware of your own patterns and conditioning and ideas, and you realize that you were projecting these things on others and forcing others to do what you know what you thought it was right um that is when you know the relationship becomes conscious when you become conscious of your own patterns and beliefs mm. and values then you open the doors for a relationship a relationship to become conscious too because um yeah you will attract people that are on a similar path 
And so conscious relationship for me is really a way to relate to others and can be also friendship, you know, but really be authentic. You know, not just showing, as you were saying earlier, not just showing the good part at the beginning. And then with time, the other person discovers the, the other parts of you that maybe you tried, you tried to hide is like being fully transparent with who you are and doing it since the beginning. To me, that was a very beautiful things to see in my partner. You know, in, he didn't hide anything. He was fully himself. Uh, since the beginning and also I was like that and um, really trying and this is still difficult now sometimes but you know try to own your own shit (laughs) try to own your own projections your own insecurities your own shadows without giving the fault to other to the other person I think that's mm. that's also something that I see different in this relationship compared to sometimes we still make mistakes. It's really not about perfection, but uh, it's not a constant projection of your own shadows onto others and, you know, blaming others for everything. It's really taking responsibility for what you are doing and that creates that kind of reality. And yeah, and really freedom, as I was telling you before, um, that might be more difficult for me than my partner right now, because as I said, this is where I was coming from, you know, restriction and control. Uh, even if it was an extreme, what I was doing, I still see now how I was trying to control the other person. And so... Is really also to me having a vision together. And this is the first time in my life that I have the same vision as my partner. You know, we want mm. the same thing. We want the same idea. We have the same idea of family. We have the same mission, if we can call it like that, in the world. And, um, and I don't think you need to do the same things and have this exact same vision, but you need to want the same things. Otherwise you end up going in opposite directions, you know? Mm. Mm. Uh, So having shared value as well is very important, you know, value community, valuing, I don't know, traveling together, valuing people, having different backgrounds. So having a community spread around the world, some people might not like that and there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, now I found someone that is on the same page on that too, you know? So, Mm. yeah. Um, And again, I don't think all the relationships need to be conscious. We are all in different paths uh, of evolution, all at different stages. So, I don't want to also put pressure on people. Oh my God, now all the relationships need to be conscious, otherwise they're not valid. But, you know, it really depends on your state of evolution and what, yeah, what you really feel you want in this life. And I know for me, this is what I want to create more probably than anything else. And not just Mm. romantic relationship, but conscious relationships also meaning with friends. Yeah. The same rule. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like in this conscious relationship, it's also really about, yeah, showing up as authentically and as much as you are. And at the same time, it reminds me of uh, really embracing this, seeing relationships as the ultimate tool of evolution, right? Also being uh, in that evolution together, right? Because there's like this endless unfolding of becoming more authentic, right? There's no Mm -hmm. and station or now this is who I am for the rest of my life I feel like that more belongs to maybe the the old perspective right where you think like oh now we become married okay this forever it will forever stay like this (laughs) yeah good point yeah exactly is also be willing to be in a relationship where you know you will see thousands of version of the person that you are with because, you know, that person will constantly evolve and 
yeah, be there for the evolution and hold the space and focus on the core of the person, you know, knowing your the essence of the person, not really just the identity, because that will shift. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for, for reminding me to say that because yeah, many people, as you said, say, this is who I am. This is how it's going to be for the rest of my life. But that's really not what I want to be. And I want to be constant evolution. So I need a partner that wants to evolve with me and can hold space where I'm going through, you know, my phases and I can hold space for him when he's going through his, you know, dark night of the souls as the, we say in spiritual community <laughs> and mm -hmm. challenges and things you know yeah 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 and i think this idea of conscious relating really also already conveys the idea that there is a a more spiritual perspective to it right that there is a um well maybe you can you can tell us a bit more about that because um We've been talking about relationship, right? As the, as the ultimate ev tool of evolution. We've been talking about how that journey has gone for you and how in this relationship, you really started to also find that more spiritual layer to it where you started to find like, ah, this is what for me feels like mm -hmm. what I find conscious relating. So through that whole process, what have you learned about what relationships are? when you see them as an ultimate tool of evolution? So in terms of the spiritual part of this conscious relationship is, you know, adding uh, sacredness in the relationship too. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's hard to explain with words and it still, it still need to land in me. Yeah. But, well, I think is is really, for me at least, being in harmony, not just between us two, but with the world around us, with nature, with other people. And that, you know, have ceremonies for, I don't know, full moons or equinoxes and things like that and do them with, and it doesn't have to be like that for everyone, as I said, but to me, it would be amazing to have these sacred moments shared with the person that, that I love, you know? And also really rituals, uh, between couple, couples to really honor the other person, you know, the divine masculine within him and yourself also, because we're, we have both energies, you know, and the same for him, you know, like honor the divine feminine, um, in me and within himself and really make it sacred union and heal everything that was repressed for example <laughs> you. Sorry. <laughs> i love it no problem um yeah yeah so the he's try to heal also anything that is in the collective you know everything that was repressed in the feminine for millennia and everything that needs to heal in the masculine in society too so this is the dimension that we are adding i think at this point Mm. Yes, so you're adding that kind of to your um, family, so to say, or your relationship. Yes. These yeah. uh, intentional ways of how you want to be together that add maybe to how you want to live or what your vision is. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I feel that this was a beautiful conversation. Yeah, and is. we went through the whole, and I, I'm so happy that people are going to see these parts of you and your perspective on it and the wisdom that you're here to bring in this, because I feel you do definitely have wisdom here to bring. And, uh, I can't wait also to see what this whole relationship, new idea of family is going to bring for you and for so many others. And before we round it off, I just want to invite you. Is there anything you would still like to answer in this podcast or that you feel called to say or that you still want to touch upon before we yeah. round it off? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for helping me in this. It's been great. And also for all the help that you gave me 
not in the podcast, but before, in the, the months before. Uh, it was really helpful for me to really start to uh, develop all of these ideas and have the courage to start talking about it and maybe at some point also, you know, do do more more of this in other ways, like courses or workshop, who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think I just wanted to add that is related to what I mentioned at the beginning, you know, the relationships are the ultimate tool for evolution. I think really if people maybe are in relationship, they're not fulfilling for them, but they're scared of leave or because mm-hmm. there is nothing better or people are have been single for a while and they think there is no hope for them. It's just not for them. If it's something that they really and truly desire, just trust that and start to move in the direction that their intuition is telling them. Because if they have that desire, there is a reason. And I hope I can be a proof that even if for a long time uh, relationship didn't work for you in the way you wanted, it, they can still work after. And there is no a right age or wrong age to get married or uh, buy a house or find the right partner you know this is just what society told us to believe that a certain age you have to have certain things and you have to do them in a specific order but it's really not the case i'm getting married at 37 which i think for many is late but um, i'm so glad that i waited i'm so glad that i didn't settle for things that i knew in my heart that weren't the right things for me and i'm also grateful for all the heartbreaks of the people that left and maybe i would have loved to continue with them because they taught me so much and really if you find yourself um in during a breakup in these times like really try to make the best out of it and you know start to do what you really love and try to discover yourself just ask yourself also what is that i'm learning here what is that i learned in the relationship why it didn't work and things like that you know also not just giving the fault to the other person but see your own responsibility in the relationship and whatever happened and also really really to remember that you know engagement uh, marriage and having kids are all amazing things but they are not for me is not the most important thing to celebrate i want to celebrate it and i'm sure everything is going to be beautiful but the best thing for me has been the transformation that happened within myself to get to this point and to become who I am right now and, you know, attract this kind of partnership. So mm-hmm. really, whatever we want is because we think that thing will make us feel in a certain way, but is is not that people can get married and can have kids but still feel miserable. So the important thing to focus on is really the transformation that you can have to get to these things, but in a healthy state, you know, and not just manifesting these things unconsciously and just doing things because everyone else is doing it is, is how you become in the process to get what you want. That really makes a difference in my opinion. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. And also right for them to remember that it's all part of the evolution, right? If you, if you believe in relationships as the ultimate tool of evolution, it also means the maybe harder parts, right? Yeah. It's evolution to me feels very cyclical, right? Mm-hmm. There's no beginning or end and it's not like, Oh, now I'm here. Now I'm there. And so yeah. there, there isn't even an end station, right? Exactly. And exactly. Marriage is not the end point of anything is just the beginning of another set of challenges you know um Mm -hmm. i know that will come my way again to evolve and grow and try to live in harmony with another human and so once you form that harmony with someone i think you can spread it then in the world yeah beautiful well let's bring this to an end i'm 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 so looking forward to see the side of you unfold Thanks. even more and i'm so excited to hear if any if you're listening to this right for sure um 
let Valentina and my me, I'm yeah. you can also let me know, of know course. what you thought and what your thoughts were, what resonated, what um, was maybe new for you or you're going to take with you. It's going to be really exciting to hear. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be watching you evolve. Thank you. And we're going to put your your details also in the show notes of the podcast so people know what you do. And uh, thank you so much for bringing this subject out of me. <laughs> and mm-hmm. You're very welcome. <laughs> it was already there. It was all already yeah. there. It was the final push. <laughs> yes, yes. I okay. love it. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye. Bye.